Hey everybody, my name is Rohan Shaw, and I'll be your SAT math tutor. Now, in each of these introductory videos, I'll just review some basic topics, and further inside the module, you'll see other videos which gives you practice problems. So, first of all, what are the different types of numbers out there, right? Well, whole numbers are just your basic counting numbers, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Integers, the difference, is it's basically still your whole numbers, but it also includes the negatives. So negative two, negative one, you know, they're integers, but they're not whole numbers. Rational numbers, here's where we're, it sounds like we're basically already getting every number you could think of. A rational number is any number that can be written as an integer over an integer. So kind of like fractions, right? Like two thirds is a rational number. 18 ninths is a rational number. Here's the thing, even something like 15.2, like the decimal, is a rational number because it can be written 152 over 10, right? That's the same thing as 15.2, right? So even 15.2 is technically a rational number because it can be written. So now you might be wondering, well then, what's irrational? Irrational is like, you know, anything that can't be written. So that's basically irrational numbers, they usually go on forever, because see if this went on forever and never stopped, uh, then you can't really write it as a fraction now, right? So irrationals will be numbers like pi or like root 2, numbers that go on forever. Real numbers then are basically all rational numbers and all irrational numbers. So it seems like we've basically captured everything. So what's left then? What number is imaginary then? Well, here's the thing. Root negative 1, a.k.a. i, is imaginary. Here's why. Because it's like, let's think about what root negative 1 means. Root means any number times itself equaling that. What number times itself would be negative one? No number we know, rational or irrational, can be multiplied to itself to get a negative. So that's why i, we've, we're defining it as an imaginary number, multiplying it by itself gives you negative one. Speaking of positives and negatives, is zero positive or negative? Well, the answer is that it's actually neither. You know, it's exactly between the positives and negatives, so we define it as neither positive nor negative. But is it even or odd? Not neither, it actually is even, because, you know, looking at the even numbers, you know, they jump by two, so do the odds, but again, if you look at it all out, zero is even, but it's neither positive nor negative. Finally, some new vocab words here. Factor, multiple, prime, composite. Factor is any number that divides in, that goes into another number. So, if you have eight, for example, Four is a factor of it, because four times some other whole number is eight. Two is a factor of it. One is a factor. So these are all factors. Multiples, it's kind of like the opposite of that. Eight is a multiple of four. Eight is a multiple of two, and so on. So really, four, all the multiples of four are four, eight, twelve, and so on. Prime, a prime number is a number which only has exactly two factors one in itself. So 17, for example, the only factors of 17 are 1 and 17. 8 clearly is not a prime number because it has more than just 8 and 1 as factors. Uh, so that's what's called a composite number. So any number that's not prime is composite. 1 actually might seem like a prime number, but it's just defined as a composite number. So really the prime numbers are like 2, you know, 3, 5, stuff like that. If that helped, make sure you subscribe to our SAT math platform where you can learn some math and learn to know.